Hi, I'm Megan Gilger, and welcome to the Fresh Exchange podcast. So as you guys know, this whole month is about seat starting. Both in our online community, we just launched our seat starting course. If you're interested, you can become a member anytime by heading to community.freshexchange.com and join us. It begins at $84 for three months and you get an all access pass to everything in the community, including all of the courses. So it's totally up to you how quickly you want to utilize those things. And you also get to hang out with some cool people. But nevertheless, here we are in the podcast and we are talking about today specifically about seed starting, but we're talking about the stages of seed starting. I don't know if you guys knew about this, but there are actual stages. It's pretty fascinating. And what I love about it is it's sort of like anything in life that revolves around nature and things. We all come from the same place. And usually these systems um, are very closely related to who we are as humans. And they're also closely related to animals. All of it is very similar. It's really important to understand. It allows us to know and understand timing of things, how to shift things. And we're going to talk about that today. So first of all, if you are planning to seed start this year, it's incredibly important to listen to this. If you are not, this could just be really interesting in terms of understanding plant life and how things germinate and how they actually work. So we're going to go through the first stage of seed starting is the seed. So you got the seed, right? It is this beautiful little thing that comes in many shapes and sizes, but that seed holds all the information and nutrients that it needs in order to become a plant. It is not a plant yet, and it will become one with the right situation. And this is where understanding soil temperature comes into play. It also is really important to understand that our mix that we're using, is there's a seed starting and germination mix, and then there is a potting mix for our seedlings. <laughs> so you can utilize some that are more of like a three in one that are really important. The key is, is that we don't want soil. I know that sounds really counterintuitive, but when we're starting seeds indoors, soil actually brings in a lot of potential funguses and issues. And the plant as it's starting to germinate does not need seed starting or any soil at all. What it needs is it needs space to create strong and healthy roots. It needs plenty of moisture, but the right amount of moisture. It needs heat typically most of the time, not everything, but a lot of things. And it needs light. So those in humidity many times, specifically the things that are warm weather. So it's really, really important to understand that. But in this germination phase, our mix needs to be basically made up of cocoa core, which is airy and fluffy when it's um, dampened, and it creates lots of space for roots to develop. And then we want perlite and vermiculite. They help with opening up airways in the mix, and they also help with moisture retention so that there's consistent moisture coming in. And I also like to add mycorrhiza in, which is a basically when you lift up uh, mulch in your garden and you see that white stuff, that is all part of that. That's mycelium, but it's very similar in that it helps our roots communicate of our plants. And so mycorrhiza is part of that process. It's slightly different, but similar vein of fungus. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of nuances. I'm skipping a lot of them to make this simple and digestible, but we can get into science of communication of roots at some point if you would like to. But basically <laughs> what you want is that that will help your plants create strong root system, healthy root development, which ultimately makes a very healthy plant. So it once it germinates, it creates these first two leaves 
And they have a very specific name that I can never pronounce correctly. But those first two leaves do not actually look like the plant's true leaves. This is why it's really important to mark your plants because you probably will forget what they are. Unless you're like, I'm only starting tomatoes this year in one variety, then you probably would remember. But most of the time you will not know. That said, those two leaves begin the process of photosynthesis and begin the process for that plant to develop the rest of its leaves. Once the plant has developed two leaves, it is no longer a seed, but a true plant at that point. And it needs, it no longer has all the nutrients that it needs coming from the seed. So we need to now move it and up pot it. It is now a seedling. And this means that we now have to feed this plant. This plant now needs nutrients because it no longer has them. And this is where we can add in compost to that mix. Compost is going to hold a lot of micronutrients, a lot of healthy organic matter that the plant needs. Mixing it into that same seedling mix that we had before, but now we just add that compost part will be really essential. You can use garden potting mix if you would like to, but I really suggest if you cannot find a really good organic compost mix that it's better to just stick with your seedling mix and then be feeding your plant with a foliar feed or an all around organic fertilizer. Like, um, I like to use Neptune's organic. They have a lot of great options. I'm testing out their tomato and veg this year, but I have in the past used the fish and seaweed and it's a very even simple to use and put on your plants. And most plants are always happy with it. So I really suggest that this feed then goes into their leaves. And when we do that, it is so helpful to them because it's taking it in both through its leaves and through the soil. So, cause we water them with the fertilizer and it then has everything that it needs. Now, as this plant develops and it grows, you don't have to feed it every day or anything like that. Usually once every two to three weeks is all it needs. Um, these plants are small still and they don't, they aren't sucking and drawing a lot of nutrients and they're not creating fruit yet or flowers. Typically, if they're at that stage, they need to be outside because like I said, we're now going to move into the stage where think of it like the seedling is the baby that has emerged into the world. And now our seedling goes from baby to eventually, once we put it outside, a teenager that is ready to teenager slash adult plant that is ready to move into move from, well, we'll just put like teen is sort of the hardening off process of like preparing it for real life. And then the adult plant is the one that we put in the ground. The needs that they have are different at different points, but the hardest point is the germination and the seedling stage. Those two stages are incredibly challenging. And there's a reason think about it. Like I just said, like the germination is getting pregnant. It can be challenging. It can be hard. And the point in which it has those first two leaves, is really exciting, but it's still not a seedling yet. <laughs> and then once it has those two leaves and we up pot it, we now have that baby and now we're feeding it. It no longer can utilize its mother, AKA the seed as its source of nutrients solely. And now it needs something, some other way to consume its food. And so I think it's really important to understand this concept because so many of us see them kind of all the same, all blurs together. And we forget that like each one of these things is an incredible important stage in the plant's life. Even though it goes incredibly quickly compared to adult, like human life, it, it it's very fast paced to us, but for a plant, it's its whole life. And so and we need to be very gracious and understanding of the process it's going through in order to be good caretakers, right? So I like to think about these seedlings that they need challenges too, as much as they need me to kind of be really good about feeding and watering and taking care of them and being conscious of what their needs are, such as like, how much light do they need? How far away the light should be from them? Um, and paying attention to the signs that they have. We're going to do a troubleshooting podcast coming up, but there's certain things that 
they'll show us that will tell us what they need and or if we aren't caring for them properly. Um, some of the things are out of our control. Some of them aren't and or we can control them. So it's just a matter of paying attention. But I think understanding that there's these important phases in a life of a plant is incredibly helpful to understanding how to care for them because each one of these stages will be key to knowing what they need and when they need it and how we can start relaxing as they age and how little they might need of us as they grow. In that first section of germination, we have to pay attention to everything, the type of like seed starting mix they're in because we don't want them to get a fungus. <laughs> the the soil temperature they need in order to actually germinate, how much water are they getting? And is it coming from the bottom? Is it coming from the top? What is better? How much light are they getting? How much um, humidity and airflow are they getting? All these things make a lot of difference in the very beginning. But then once they can turn into a seedling and they're established as a seedling, we really still have to pay attention to these things, but it, our grip loosens a little, little, little as they mature until they are finally in the ground. And then it's just a different game. Some of it's just nature and we cannot control it. So it's sort of probably how my parents feel about me. <laughs> so I just like to see, see these different stages of a plant because I also think that it allows us to understand how to be caretakers ourselves and to be even particularly in this case, like a parent, or even to be around something that is growing and um, evolving and how at different stages in our life, it needs something different than it may need later on, later on. And that's okay. So it's just about acknowledging the state in which we're in. So I hope this is really helpful to understand. Like I said, I go through all of this in our online community. So if you're interested, you can join at any time by just heading to community.freshexchange.com. I do have a free herb garden course if you just want to jump into that. That one's available at any time. So you can check that out. There's also one free event every single month if you just want to check out what we're doing. But you can see everything if you go to uh, community.freshexchange.com because it, it lets you in to see what we're doing there. Um, you just can't access anything until you become a member. So I hope that's helpful. Like I said, this is in the C-starting course. So check it out if you're interested. Until then, my friends, I'll see you out there.